I'm fascinated by the story, and it has been about three weeks since China clamped down on Bitcoin mining. I know you spoke with the uh, Foundry Digital, one of the biggest North American-based uh, mining pools. What did they tell you about the current activity? Hey, Kristen. Uh, so Foundry's pool was actually one of the only mining pools among the top 10 largest to see its computing power, or hash rate to use industry parlance, increase in the aftermath of the crackdown in China. So I saw that and I wanted to learn a little bit more about their perspective. Um, over the past three weeks, Foundry, which provides multiple services in the crypto space, has had an up close view of the transition. Um, VP Kevin Zhang said phones have been ringing off the hook from mining operators trying to move their operations out of China as quickly as possible. The company has been doing everything from buying up discount mining rigs from closed down operators financing equipment and providing guidance for new operators and building out additional mining operations of its own. Uh, really, they've been looking all over the world for new locations uh, for their own mines and for miners that they're working with. And the sell-off that we see in Bitcoin in the crypto space uh, does coincide with China cracking down on miners, as we've been discussing. I'm just curious, Alex, does this mean we could see more miners setting up shop here in the U.S.? So Foundry was actually founded for that very purpose. It was designed to try to move more miners into North America out of China. But at the same time, their goal really more than it was locating new mines in China was about keeping the network decentralized, which is a big selling point uh, for Bitcoin. And actually one of the major criticisms that stemmed from the fact that China had for so long dominated the mining space. So I think now uh, they don't want to recreate that uh, centralization somewhere else, they want to spread it around. So that means, of course, uh, citing some in, in North America, the U.S., uh, Scandinavia. Uh, there are some economics in play here. Uh, places like Kazakhstan, where there's less stringent legal codes and cheap energy, will be the place where a lot of miners are going to go immediately because for reasons of speed. They can get back up and running as quickly as possible. But from Foundry's perspective, they also see North America as a place where you have access to capital markets and you can scale more quickly. So really, they are looking all over the world uh, and working with companies all over the world to rebuild up new mining operations. Mm -hmm. So what is the impact that you've seen on the price of Bitcoin and other cryptos in the wake of this? So one thing that Foundry stressed is that the economics of Bitcoin mining are all about timing. He said, Zhang in particular said that right now is actually a great time to be a miner because Bitcoin's hash rate has fallen. So what that means is that the difficulty of solving the complex mathematical problem that keeps the network up and running has gotten easier. Uh, this means that mining has become more profitable regardless of the fact that Bitcoin's price has gone down significantly from its peaks earlier this year. Uh, this will balance out as Bitcoin's hash rate recovers, but in the short term, we could see a lot of miners trying to get up and running as quickly as possible just to take advantage of the easier algorithm. Uh, that's one reason why, regardless of Foundry's interest in keeping the network decentralized, there's going to be a big incentive to set up wherever is easiest. All right. An exporter of Bitcoin. I don't know. Is that on the docket for the U.S., Alex? That is uh, anybody's guess, but I do think we are going to play a role because, you know, as Foundry mentioned, access to capital markets is a big deal and these companies are going to want to scale up as quickly as possible. So in that way, there are advantages to setting up in North America.